Alrighty folks, welcome to a sort of series called Welcome to My Brain. So I want to make some videos regarding full essay run-throughs from my point of view, as if I was writing them here. And so for the AP exam, every essay is about 40 minutes, right? And so far we've been doing like either a paragraph, two paragraphs, sometimes a full essay, um, sometimes not a full intro, just like a thesis statement, whatever. But for today, I want to show you how I would do a full synthesis essay and then later um, my approaches, the actual writing process of it itself. This is going to be a long video, by the way, as you can see from the actual time of it. And even though it is a 40 minute writing period for the essay itself, it might go over, right? Because I'm giving instructions and so forth and kind of like doing that um, brainstorming and explanation process. So this video is probably going to be about like, honestly, 15 minutes. So if you want to watch it like two times speed, that's absolutely cool. But um, to give you an overview, what I'm going to be doing is go over the prompt, go over the writing requirement, um, go through every source and kind of think about how I would summarize, how I would find important quotes, how would I support um, an essay with these sources. And then later, kind of a debrief of all these sources, kind of outlying and figure out where I want to go with this, and then later the actual essay writing itself. Now, I'm doing like a one-shot thing, meaning that, because I'm not good at editing and all that, so, excuse me. I'm not editing that burp out, for example. I'm just going to keep everything as is. And um, if I make any blunders or mess ups or anything like that, then, oh well, deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to be as raw as possible. Plus, I'm not a very good editor, so it is too much work for me here. Uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do is just kind of like muse to myself, which means like I'm basically talking to myself and demonstrating my thinking process so that in doing so, hopefully you are able to um, draw from my process a little bit more of a structure, a little bit of a strategy as to how to approach the synthesis here. Now, a little bit, of, a couple caveats, a couple of like disclaimers, right? I've seen every AP Lang prompt um, since like 1999 and I know most of them, but I haven't like really taught them extensively. So for the one I've chosen today, it's one I've less taught uh, to give it a little bit more of an even playing field. So I haven't seen like all the student samples. I haven't really, really gone over with the class and I haven't like chosen this one here. It's more of a boring one. That's why I've, I've largely excluded it from previous um, classes altogether. So in this, even though I've seen these sources to some degree before, like I don't, I don't have like a memory of it, right? Um, the ones that we've done, like eminent domain, for example, I still remember like what source A and source B and source C is, and so forth and so on. Like, so this one's a little bit more kind of um, as if I was doing it um, without that prior knowledge, as you would for the AP exam. So without further ado, um, just a couple things to keep in mind as well. I will be reading these documents on hand, meaning like you're going to see some times where I'm just like staring blankly into my screen and trying to figure out what exactly it's trying to say. Um, so you're going to have to bear with me there. That's why I would recommend, yeah, if you want to watch it in two times speed, then you probably should because I don't think you want to watch me read in real time um, and all that there. Now, when I do process to myself, I I kind of have a potty mouth. And I mean, I, I, don't, I normally do, but it's not like on purpose. I'm just trying to like contextualize it in my voice. And my voice is very like casual and critical and all that so just keep that in mind all right here we go let's go in and get started whatever time we're at right now just kind of take that and just add the 40 minute time period here um welcome to my brain for a synthesis here so i'm looking at this prompt and i'm thinking okay directions are the same skip that introduction and assignment are the things i want to look at for sure so i'm gonna read these to myself and figure out what exactly is asking for museums are collections of artifacts yep we all know that although museums can represent interests from fine arts to whaling people who visit museums sometimes fail to realize that every exhibit every display case represents a series of human decisions some individual or group of individuals has to decide to include a particular piece of art or specific artifact in the museum's collection. Okay, so it seems to be like a discussion in terms of what do we put into a museum? Because nothing's random. It's not like we're going to find some caveman's club and then we have like some fine art and it's like, all right, which one do we want? A, B, uh, this one. So it seems to be like the decision process when it comes to uh, museum showings here. Assignment, read the following sources. Okay, 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 cool. Bolded part, write an essay in which you develop a position on the most important considerations facing the person responsible for securing a new work of art or an artifact for a museum. Synthesize at least three of the sources for support. Wow, this is a really obscure prompt because basically we have to like role play as a museum curator or someone who's like in charge of like bring in new, uh, I don't know, sites, new products to gawk at and all that there and what then is the most um, important considerations for securing a new work of art 
or an artifact from a museum. And securing, this is where it might be a little bit tricky in terms of what they meant by that. Securing, I think, means like um, what decisions they have to go through or what are some of the, um, I don't know, like safety as a factor perhaps. Like, you know, what are some things that we can legitimately put in without any like um, legal aspects or um, I don't know, cultural critiques or whatever, right? So pondering the subject of prompt, what I'll do kind of like in my head for like a minute or two as I read this, um, I'm thinking about like, what are my general thoughts without sources? What are my kind of like, you know, just brainstormings on this here. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to think about culture, right? Thinking about culture, uh, some groups may be uh, offended by the choices made in museum. So, yeah. I'll give you an example, like like American Indian stuff, right? Like, no, that's that's racist too. Native Americans, my bad. Uh, Native Americans might be offended if you have a bunch of their stuff, like their artifacts, in the museum. Um, themes from imperialization or imperializing. Uh, I'm pretty sure those countries don't really appreciate seeing their goods in um, a glass case somewhere. What else? Um, other things. Offended, offended. Maybe like, I don't know some tragedy, tragic event in history. Which means uh, if the museum isn't really careful about it, it might kind of cause people to be outraged and uh, disturbed by almost like glamorizing something that shouldn't be glamorized, right? Like there's like a Holocaust museum, for example, that like um, intentionally and very specifically demonstrates the horrors of, excuse me, the Holocaust, but to suddenly have like some random Holocaust related stuff in your museum, that's a little bit like, um, absurd there. Other things responsible for work of art, so maybe things like drawing in interest. Uh, not everyone is interested in um, one particular genre of work, so I gotta consider like, you know, what are some things that people really want to look at for a museum. What else? Responsible for securing a new work of art. I'm thinking about um, upkeep. I'm thinking about, is this thing going to require a lot of maintenance? Because if it's like a document that requires a lot of like, security, um, maybe not security, it's the damn museum, right? Um, I never like the original, the original document for the constitution, for example, requires a lot of like, um, taking care of because it's a fragile document. It could just like fade away at any moment, right? So upkeep is important. Um, by the way, the, the pages are going to shift a little bit because I'm like typing these boxes. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise we're like focusing on this box right here, right? Uh, let's just think about one more thing that might be an issue in terms of like considering for a new work of art or artifact there. Maybe just something basic, right? Maybe just like um, the property size. Um, what do you call it? Just like how much space it occupies. Space of occupation. I'm thinking about like, okay, what if I want to put in... So you see, it's like a big ass painting, for example, right? Well, that's a huge wall now taken away for that occupation. Is it worth it? Is it something to consider? Yada, yada, yada. So these are some things I'll keep in mind as I'm looking through the documents. So I think that with this um, prompt, it's a little bit trickier because usually for the synthesis prompt, it's kind of like a, do you agree, disagree, or a kind of like, how much, how much have you measured type prompt, right? This one's more about um, what is the most important. So it's very specific in terms of what it's asking for. So I can't really go through documents necessarily and um, look for like pro-con documents because it's not like asking for that. So I'm just gonna read these straight up and just go through each one really quickly here. So without further ado, let me go ahead and look at source A and just read them real quick. So I'm, I'm reading silently, right? Um, just to myself and just figuring out what this is asking for. So give me a sec. Mm, okay. Okay, so big costs. Okay. High cost of upkeep. Um, approaching, God damn it, okay. approaching one million. Deficits um, still. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. So um, political slash economic factors versus art um, for. Art for art's sake, I guess. Um, okay, so um, new art versus um, older pieces. Okay, so that's a sum small summary. By the way, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier on. It's probably better if you if you all read these sources, um, even if it's just a quick skim, right, beforehand, because then you can kind of see where I'm coming from in my reading of it, and then later seeing how I might draw from um, these sources altogether. So just 
you can if you want to. I think it's more effective, but you don't have to necessarily here. So this source, it seems to be talking about the high upkeep of particular museums. Um, it seems to be discussing these numbers of how much it costs, right? So it costs like roughly a million a year for um, their deficits. Like, you know, they're going more and more in debt. And even though they had these campaigns to raise money, these deficits are eroding this reserve here. So it's going all downhill, essentially. And what makes it even worse was um, the management seemed to be more interested in... Um, what special interest groups were trying to um, make policies for rather than going to actual program um, upkeep stuff like what do you call it acquisition exhibitions and various upkeep stuff there in general and then it seems to be almost like a uh, economic slash political factor versus art for art's sake like art is down here and like with these people these trustees are up here so it's like a you know business versus um like a more intrinsic desire right and then later they had these issues in terms of like old versus new, like what contemporary artists were trying to publish and then later what um, old artists were trying to do. Important quote, I mean, I think what I want to take from this one is perhaps like the logos in here. So logos, I'm looking at the um, deficit numbers to prove my point. And then how to support, I'm thinking about upkeep, right? And the um, difficulties that of running a museum in general slash interest oops okay so that's source a i have that as a little a save thing here whoa too many next one so i'm looking at this picture here let me move this up real quick so this isn't like god damn it come on mother fudger hold on sorry I'm trying to give myself more space all right so this one's an image and images do have different approaches in terms of how we analyze them and i'm looking at this big old chunk here seems to be a description as to what this is normally it's like a political cartoon or something that like we analyze in terms of what the components of the painting are i'm looking at this i'm thinking like oh i mean seems like a, a gentleman from like the what 17 1800s surrounded by various artifacts in what seems to be in a museum people are in the back kind of like doing their thing he's lifting this big ass veil too so he's kind of like showing his museum behind him almost like he's trying to you know this is my this is mine essentially so let me just read the little document um description here because it seems important here uh, okay so um private versus public museums um accessible to the common person okay um, okay Okay, so this, this image, I think it was most important for this one's the description. So if they give you an image, but there's like a big old text box on top there, that, you know, it's part of the image, quote unquote, because it kind of like explains and delineates what this image is about. So I read that, and it seems to be uh, about private versus public museums, because back then it was mostly accessible to like scholars and the elite, but now it's like accessible to the common person. And this dude's museum, it started out small, right? It seems that he had this ambition, this dream of, you know, some small artworks of his own into this uh, bigger scaled demonstration of, it mentions here like performers, zoo, biological oddities, uh, Root resembling a human face, five-legged cow with no tail. And to me, I want to use that quote. I want to use the quote at the end. Quote at end about the oddities in his museum. Because this stuff doesn't seem like museum stuff anymore. It seems to be almost like a spectacle, right? Spectacle stuff versus museum. What exactly is a museum at this point? It seems to be more like a, almost like a, I don't know, just a fair and attraction. How to support? I'm thinking about maybe like what constitutes... Yeah, god damn it. Um, a museum. What does one put in it to make it a museum? All right, source C, again, I'm just reading this, uh, about the National Museum of the American Indian. I mentioned this earlier um, about how it might have like Native American type stuff that um, could be found offended or offensive to um, Native Americans. And also just like, um, the question is, are you displaying it for art's sake or are you displaying it because you're trying to like exploit a people's culture, right? So, let me see. Okay. Okay, empowering. Empowering. Boys, native. Yeah, natives. What else? Uh, okay, that's a shit 
kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, so it's about representation of um, uh, museum's capability of, sh of uh, showing, of, uh, of uh, informing people of, quote, lost cultures. All right, so for this one, it seems to be largely about Native Americans and what a museum could do for them, because, you know, largely Native Americans had been destroyed by settlers and all that there, right? So very little is actually known about them and they even today don't have a lot of like representation in modern media. So it's kind of a, a despairing thing to, to see and to have for um, this group of people. But museums could um, kind of elucidate more about them and also kind of um, give us an idea as to uh, how rich a culture was and still is, right? Because they mentioned contemporary art and all that there. So um, in the middle of this paragraph, middle of paragraph discusses the um, many works of different uh, subcultures slash modern and new. I definitely want to touch on that where it seems to be like an informative museum that shows how extensive and expansive uh, Native Americans have lived. How to support? I can talk about um, museums duties of what to include and uh, what do you call it? Um, its role in society. So I'm thinking already about synthesis, right? This dude's museum was about like random stuff that he thought was interesting to display to people, almost like a fair. This one's to inform, so I could talk about how like museums have a job in terms of maybe, um, what do you call it? Giving us more intel of the past and perhaps connecting to a past present here. Source D, let me just real quick here. Uh, museum shops, okay. Summary to all museum shops. What about them? Let's see. Okay. Our sales in museums are important in the museum itself. I already have this. I have a direction in my head already. Um. Wait, hold on. Uh huh. Okay. Products sold often not to inform what to sell. Um, money and education is a quote I can use as well. So this piece talks about how like you have these gift shops and um, they do provide revenue for museums, but the problem is oftentimes these gift shops don't inform people they really are just to make money right and that seems unethical because what you could do not an accident maybe it's not an accident i don't know but intentionally unintentionally you could exploit a people's culture again to make money for um you know profit essentially so let's think about that native american piece we just read for example what if i had a gift shop that just sold stuff that you know fetishizes native american history right without really informing people from those products there that seems to be kind of messed up there so important quote i might talk about the last quote last line um, discussing the implications um, of profit versus um, informing. And how to support, I'm thinking about the synthesizing with, uh, what is it, source C? Since with source C on uh, selling a culture. Boom. Source E. Let me read this again. God damn, why are these uh, italics so long for this set? Book about the museum. Okay. Wait, hold on. By the way, I'm playing music because, like, my mic picks up static because that's life. So the music's trying to, like, balance that out, basically. Um, attack on contemporary architecture. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. 
Good quote there, I could use that. Da, 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 da. Okay, big word here. Sanitized history of um, colonial Williamsburg. So basically, this whole piece here discusses how uh, we have these museums that um, are designed to inform, again, about like a particular time period, right? Does 18th century colonial towns, for example, in this article. But at the same time, um, what, what they exclude is the actual hardships. For example, in the very ending here, it avoids historical unpleasantness like slavery, disease, and class oppression in favor of a rosy picture of an elegant, harmonious past. I'll take that quote. Thank you very much. Last P about slavery, disease, and class. So what happens here is we oftentimes will make these museums to, quote, inform, but we oftentimes leave out because, um, I don't know, just considering like family, family morals or kids or whatever, right? It's like trying to give them a more watered down version. But then at the same time, it's like, it's corporate. It, it seems to be like almost a Disneyland-esque kind of situation where we ignore all the things that are real about that history there and do it a disservice then. So how to support? What I could do is maybe use this as a counter argument. Um, counter argument about what not to do for museums in choosing the works. I think there's one more source, right? Source F. Okay, we got one more source here. Let's go ahead and look at this real quick. I got it's called Testimony. Hearing of the Presidential Advisory Commission on Holocaust. Knew it. I knew there was gonna be a Holocaust something in here. Let's read this real quick. Um buh, 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 buh. Return of art that was stolen from private collections of Nazis. Okay. Uh -huh. Effort we made trying to find some other. Okay, so in this case, this museum has to consider. A uh, museum has to consider. It's, a, it's, it's called the Met Museum. Has to consider. Bloody hell, is put over here. My cursor go. Met Museum has to consider is based integrity of art um, in this context uh, Nazi stolen art Goddamn. Um, that needs to be verified so in this case um, some museums do have art pieces that are uh, that are from like unfavorable time periods right this case here we're looking at um the holocaust for example and we have to consider uh, is this art stolen from someone else therefore this museum doesn't really have the rights to or has to like validate um that ownership there because you can't just like claim this art from um stealing from another thief you know what i mean like it, it just it disintegrates the um the uh the values and ethics of what you're trying to demonstrate here. Um, it, it again kind of neglects the victims of art because oftentimes the things in a museum are are stolen. They are things that are taken from other countries or people or whatever, right? So this museum in taking them ignores the plight and the struggles of those who um, lost their goods in the past year. Important quote I'm thinking about. Mm -mm -mm. I'm thinking about the last paragraph again. So in this case, it look, it's looking about how there is this, um, he's making like this closing statement about this unlawful and moral spoilation of art. So I'm thinking about profound conviction, et cetera, et cetera. How to support? I could, I already have, like I said, I have the direction in terms of how my essay is gonna go. So I'm thinking about um, merging this once more with the whole Native American thing, because even though you know, two different stories, right? Native Americans in Holocaust, like not quite exactly the historical like equivalents, but um, museums having this duty then to consider um, from where is this art from? Because if you have this Native American museum, was that art stolen, for example? Was it um, taken from like a village, taken from a tribe and um, never returned or given credit to where credit is due? So how to support, um, thinking about how museums need to consider the origins of their art. Boom. 
All right, so I'm gonna go back to the prompt now. I've went through every source. This is, by the way, slower than I normally would because I am like talking to myself and I'm uh, explaining like my thought process and all that, right? So bear with me, but otherwise now I'm looking at the assignment again because I need to go back to the beginning and figure out which sources I want to choose and also uh, what, I'm what am I trying to answer with my thesis here. So I have to, again, write an essay in which to develop a decision on the most important considerations facing the person responsible for securing a new work of art or an artifact for a museum. I got to synthesize three of the sources for support here. So let's think about thesis. What am I? What am I arguing here essentially? Right. What is the most important thing for my thesis here? Now this is not like rhetorical analysis where I need devices, but I do need points as to what to argue essentially. So let me start. Let me start basic here for my thesis. I'm thinking about. Okay. Well, what do I think is the most important things? I'm thinking about. Um, I'm thinking about the integrity of art. I'm thinking about the um, educational purposes. And I'm thinking about um, profit versus uh, not ethics, but like value, I guess. And then kind of like what not to do for art, which is um, sales or uh, uh, glorification. I'll put that for now, but that's not exactly what I mean. Glorification. So with these four points here, let's think about a thesis in terms of how I might want to um, respond to this here. Um, I might change this, by the way, in the midst of it, because I'm just kind of like musing right now, right? Um, or wait no with transparency and avoidance of Okay, kind of a long thesis, and that's fine if you want to do a long thesis. I feel like I have to for this one because there's like a, a lot of nuances that I came up with and also that I'm trying to answer in my essay here. So for my thesis, I wrote, A museum's purpose is to inform the public of significant historical events with transparency and avoidance of lucrative gains. Therefore, in planning for the securing of new art, one must be responsible in, cons sorry, responsible in considering whether the art piece is acquired ethically, whether the piece may bestow knowledge rather than serve than just serve as a gimmick and that it does justice for the culture or people or people it comes to represent i got three big things i'm looking for here to prove and also i might discuss in my intro paragraph that what a museum's purpose is um leading into what this um curator or whomever um must consider in getting this piece in itself here i definitely want to like center on the native american one because i feel like it's, it just it just clicks with me right so i'm looking at source c for sure uh, let's just look at the i don't talk about source a whatsoever i don't care about upkeep uh, I want to use source C. I want to use what else? I might use source B somewhere as a small point, but not really. So I'm thinking about like B small point. I'm thinking about I need two more, right? At least two more. 
Um, oh, the museum shop one. I think I might use that one as a sort of counter argument one. So the museum one I'm thinking about. Um, sanitized history. Um, yeah, I can use source E. And I may even use source F as well. So this one I'm using like at least five sources. Um, B and D I might use a little bit less of, but um, for sure I think my primary ones are C, E, and F to discuss this piece here. So in terms of my body paragraphs, they might look something like this here, where I have my thesis already, right? So I have that up there. Um, let's say body one, I'm looking at, let's see, my first point was um, acquired ethically. So for that one, the source that discusses that was, what is it? F has that. What's another one regarding ethics? Um, let's talk about maybe source C in this case here. Source C. Uh, body paragraph two, what am I discussing? I'm talking about knowledge versus gimmick. What are those two sources here? Knowledge versus gimmick, right? So knowledge versus gimmick. I'm looking at, where is it? Source B, and then later source D. Maybe even it's E. So I got B, D, E, B, D, okay. B, D, and E. What do I pick up three? What do I need for this one? I need justice for this group. Okay, so justice for a group. I'm looking at um, E and oh, that A is useless. Mm. Justice for group. Maybe F again. No, maybe not. Maybe maybe E C. CDE, CDE, let's do that. And those are my general body paragraphs, conclusion if I can, and then later that is my full-blown essay in terms of how I would approach it in this time period here. So when I'm doing my essay, and I might actually make a second video for this because I don't like two big old, pair, uh, two big old videos here. Um, or, well, sorry, I don't want one big video altogether. But before I write my essay, I got a couple goals to consider, right? I need a short intro with a clear thesis. I have a thesis already. It's pretty long, so I don't need like much to discuss in there. I need two dense body paragraphs or three evenly spread separate bodies. I have that already, right? I have those three that I came up with. And then later conclusion, if time allows, short and profound. I need to make a final statement in terms of significance or like what's the big deal in terms of like, this whole museum thing here. So those are my considerations as I get to the end here for my essay. So within 40 minutes, um, I should be able to spend about 10, 15 of that planning, and then the rest of it's for writing here. Granted, they do give you more time for reading the sources and all that, so if this video runs long, just think about the fact that there is a 15 minute processing time for the synthesis essay, which you, you need for sure. And then the rest of the time should be for writing here. So I'll end the video here for now, and then later my next video we'll be talking about like um, what I would do to actually like write it and see me like write the essay. So I'll do it shortly after this one.